Oh boy. All right. All right. We're watching this one. Fuck it. I wanted to try something a little different today by sharing my love for the macabre delights of the medieval. This is the foreskin wedding ring of St. Catherine by Ask a Mortician. All right, we're going to react to this. Let's do it. Period. The Middle Ages were magic. Let's go back to the 13th century. Okay. We're here. <clears throat> The 13th century saw the rise of the female mystic, women who experienced direct religious visions that were, at times, highly erotic. Gertrude the Great, for instance, described Jesus Christ as a delicate caresser and an ardent lover. Didn't know that about Jesus. The mystics went into trances, complete with alleged levitation and stigmata, all while engaging in what they believed to be visions from God. Catherine of Siena, or Saint Catherine to you, was born in the 1300s while the Black Plague ravaged Italy. She was the 23rd of 25 children, half of whom were already dead by the time she was born. Catherine had a twin, Giovanna, who also died. The Middle Ages. What are you gonna do? From a very young age, Catherine claimed to have ecstatic visions of Jesus, to whom she vowed her chastity. When her family attempted to have her married, she cut off all her hair and sealed herself off from any human contact until her parents finally relented and let her stay single. By the time she was 19, she had visions of her being in a mystical marriage with Jesus himself at a ceremony witnessed by the Virgin Mary, the approving mother of the groom. Nice. Sometimes Love it. Sometimes Christian art depicts her as marrying adult Jesus, and sometimes baby Jesus. Instead of the usual gold ring that a husband would give a bride, Jesus slid his foreskin around ah! her finger, ah! which Catherine That is fucked! ...claimed she could see for the remainder of her life. Looks like we made it. Look how far we've come, my baby. Catherine became well known in her time for her devotion to the sick, drinking the pus and eating scabs and lice from their bodies. She was not I thought we weren't doing cooking mama, but we are. Not alone in her saintly habit of eating and licking the stuff of nightmares. St. Veronica Giuliani licked latrines with her tongue and ate spiders and cat vomit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, did you think being a saint was easy? Catherine died in her early 30s after long stretches of extreme fasting and eating only Eucharist wafers, the symbolic body of Christ. This anorexia mirabilis, or miraculous lack of appetite, is what some medieval scholars believe was a very real way for Catherine, as a mystic and aesthetic, to commune with Jesus, her perceived partner. Catherine died in Rome, but by the time of her death, she had many devotees who didn't want to see her buried anywhere but in Siena. So they came and stole her head and her thumb. As they were leaving, the guard said, it looks like you got a head in that there bag. So her followers prayed to Catherine and miraculously, allegedly, the head and thumb turned into rose petals and only reassembled when back in Siena. But of course, that's just a myth. But why then, in the Basilica of San Domenico in Siena, is there a glass reliquary case with the disembodied mummified head of St. Catherine with her thumb nearby? As if to say, good job, medieval grave robbers. The Middle Ages were magic. Brought to you with support from People's Memorial Association and the Co-op Funeral Home, and donations from viewers. Guys, religion is a little... <sighs> religion is a little fucked up sometimes. Especially Catholicism, okay?
it's just really fucked up, all right? Yeah, drinking fucking pus and licking wounds. Nah. Yeah, by the way, here's the link to, uh, to Ask a Mortician. This video is fantastic. If you want to watch more like it, there you go. There's the link. Please leave some love. Leave some comments. Some love from, uh, from Demon Mama. Um, obviously this channel is fucking huge. They don't really need any help, but just so you know, uh, 1.7 million subscribers. Holy shit. You've been to your house. What's the difference? Excuse me. Excuse me, I'll have you know, never once in the entire history of my life has anyone drank in any pus. I'll have you know, okay? Maybe somebody might have licked blood once, but no pus, okay? Fuck off. Jesus. A fucking pus? Are you for real? That's disgusting. Piss is better than pus. Okay, we've been this we've had we're gonna have to make a tier list of disgustingness of body fluids.